What is it going to be if you're going to buy F-150 2020 or 2018 about the same uh, year truck and what are you going to do with that? There is a million reasons why you want to buy the truck. Number one, because you live in the United States, as always you need the truck. I don't know why, just because you need one. Uh, and it was my opinion when I got to the States, when I got to the States and I see a million trucks running this and that. I'm like, uh, why do people need it? And after I got one, other one, and after I started doing the used car business, as you know, I started buying the trucks and I got an idea why the people want it so badly. Because the truck itself, the idea of the car which has a bat, it just insane there is a lot of things for you for your family if you do have a family you want to move some stuff you always need to move some stuff especially if you have a family if you're living by yourself there is always you have a friends who need to move the stuff for them and they do have you as a friend who has a truck and you're always welcome uh, to do so why not you want to help everyone and you want to help yourself number two and there is a lot of different reasons why but the main one that's the family truck you want to move some stuff number two that's the construction truck so you want to use it for small construction business or for the huge construction business so usually if it's a huge company and you use a lot of different trucks you're going to put a lot of stickers on it your truck in the three five years the five years i think it's not going to survive usually two three years your car is just ruining and um, not falling apart but it just beat up a lot so this car has a lot of miles for 2020. It has 92,000 miles and it's not beat up yet. It's, it is in a good condition, good, great shape. I mean, it drives great. There is no major problem with engine transmission. What I can feel, I can feel there is some uh, mounts looks like there is, a, I think it's a, either the drive shaft main bearing going up and down or the, the mounts for the rear differential for the rear axle it's a little bit worn out or something loose because every time i step on the gas uh, it feels something moving but i don't care because it is a truck as long as there is uh, uh, no major noise from the engine transmission i'm going to keep driving and you as a customer who wants to buy that kind of truck and going to use it you're going to do exactly the same because it's designed it's built for the different reason not to take care of it just use it for your purpose of life that's super cool like i say i do love trucks and f-150 one of my favorite because it's always been one of my favorite especially like a king ranch edition or the new ones what the people like a lot that's the raptor raptor before 6.2 now 3.5 I would say yes and no for both engines but the idea of that it's super cool this one has 2.7 v6 twin turbo engine and it is four wheel drive it is a lifted so it has aftermarket tires on it but same original uh original rims that's that's enough but uh again in my opinion if you're doing lift kit for the truck like that you should put a little bit bigger and wider uh at least tires maybe not the wheels because when you lift it up the your stability on the road on the freeway or in the city it's just going down a little bit so it's kind of bumpy and wavy so it's not that comfortable driving but still it is a nice beautiful truck the size of the bed it is a crew cab it has full size rear doors there is a short door like extended cab there is a just standard cap there is a lot of different caps you can buy there is a lot of different beds you can choose there is a long bed short bed this is a uh, five and a half box bed so it's a short bed but there is a more uh, useful i think because most of the time i do see the short bed and somehow it, it is working out really good for the people who own the truck it is working out for me because the door on the back it's so big and um, the space on the back it's just huge besides the kids besides the, the the seat you can put a lot of stuff on the floor and you're still gonna have a lot of space even if you're gonna squeeze like four people on the back bench it still has a lot of space you can use it as a truck industry it's super huge and there is a lot of different things you can buy besides the lift kit your exhaust your bumpers you can put the winch like a jeep you can do a lot of different camps uh it just numerous of different different upgrades you can do on the Ford and you can google it you can check it out uh, if you have one 
but what I would do, like I say, besides the wheels on this car, I would do the step sides. This car has it and looks like it is an aftermarket one, not original. Plus, you can buy a lot of different stickers and you can, what, what's really cool about it, and one of my friends, he had the car like that. So he basically bought, crashed F-150 front end and instead of just putting back to 150 the way it used to be before, he did the Raptor from that. So he changed the rear bed, he changed the front end of it and the car was looks like the Raptor. It was like three, four years ago when they were so popular and so expensive and he didn't pay that money, he just bought 3.5. Uh, 4x4, he bought the rims and all that kind of stuff and he did the conversion from F-150 regular to the Raptor. You still can do that. So the Ford itself and especially 150 F-150, they go until the end. I think those doors, they start doing it back in 20, 2014, 2015, they keep doing it. It's the same door, same design. They just keep changing the grills and the headlights a little bit, buffer, bumper and all kind of stuff. But they're going to keep going, I think at least the previous one, uh, how long was it? 10 years. So I think this one gonna go like uh, maybe two, three more years. It's gonna be same body. They're not gonna change it. Lightning, I think Lightning has the same doors, just the front end. It is a different. Uh, so what they basically doing, and they keep selling. I mean, the Ford, it's number one brand sell in the United States. Maybe just, uh, not just the United States, maybe worldwide, because it is a, it is a popular, it is a famous, it is a, uh, affordable besides buy one if you don't want to buy 4x4 you can buy always uh two-wheel drive you do want to if you don't want to buy xlt or you have more money to buy like the the platinum one or you want to buy <coughs> the raptor you can buy it but if you want to go lower if you want to go cheaper you do have an option to buy X xl xl gonna have less different options but it's gonna be much cheaper even the new one so f-150 truck that's uh that's a huge demand truck all the all the time doesn't matter what year even if i'll go five years back and i uh, try to remember what kind of trucks i bought and what's the mileage one is like it was different mileage between i would say 50,000 up to 200 plus thousand miles those trucks been selling so fast so quick that's the money wise that's the price wise but still it is on high demand it's always selling it's always needable to the people who needs a truck i mean that's simple as that uh, that's why new one they're gonna keep producing them i don't know what's the numbers how many they've been selling how many they sell right now but i think it's always high from the trucks ford if you compare with chevy chevy or ram Ford, it's always number one, always, because it is affordable. A lot of different parts you can buy it from the dealer. It's going to be much cheaper than aftermarket one, or maybe not much cheaper, but it's going to be about the same price because they know people need it. Why we should sell it for so much if we can make money by selling a lot of those parts, like the whatever, you name it, brake parts, filters, some different kind of valves, hoses. There is all the parts available at the dealer and you can buy it easily. They're not so expensive because that's why the car is so popular. The Ford, the idea of the Ford itself is just unbreakable. I mean, in, and it's not comparable. I mean, nobody, nobody can compare F-150 to any other truck which is on the high demand, which is same practical as this one and, uh, and it has value. So if you're going to buy the used one or you're going to buy the new one after three, five years, you're going to sell it for about the same price range if it's not beat up, if you didn't crash it, you didn't completely destroy the car. If you're going to keep about the same uh, condition where you buy, you're probably going to sell it about the same money because it's always, like I say, on the high demand and it's... Uh, appreciating the value not depreciating like mercedes so in case you're interested about what's going to happen when you're going to crash the car i did see a lot of those cars when they've been crashed and took it apart so the quality of that it just it looks so expensive it looks so cool but in reality it's all fake not the fake it's all kind of cheap plastic it, if you're going to hit the side it's all going to fall apart the headlight itself it just kind of cheap plastic again the fenders they are cheap at the dealer you can buy it not a problem the hood itself i mean it's not i would not say it's a uh, poor quality it's not a poor quality the quality is really good but the materials the way they making it it's like it's cheap it's cheap way to make the plastic it's cheap way to make the fenders or the hood and you can feel that quality if you know what i'm talking about the grill itself it's all moving you know and uh, again there's a lot of 
chrome pieces, the huge chrome pieces, that's what uh, bring an uh, attraction of the people, of the buyers for this car. But in reality, again, if you're gonna check it out, it's all moving, you know, the clip, you can easily break it. There is a lot of uh, uh, Chinese parts you can buy, the bumper itself, you can buy it also, you can easily remove it and replace it if you need it. So the idea of the Ford, the car is supposed to be cheap and we can do it cheaper if you want to, but the production is supposed to be cheap too. So that's why they keep looking uh, for a lot of different ways to save money for themselves. So this way they can dump the price if they need it on the market. Like for example, right now, that's what's going on with F-150 Lightning. Like a year ago, the car itself was about like a Lariat, right? You cannot buy the dealer less than like 90,000, 100,000 maybe plus. They've been asking adjustment, uh, market adjustment or something like that. They've been called, so basically over sticker. They've been asking over sticker 30, 40,000 right now. They have it for 60,000. XLT, they have it even cheaper, I think, 55. I did see at the dealer, it's been sitting there. And um, so they can they can play with that. I mean, you would say, you know, that's a technology you can buy. I'm agree with that. There is a technology you can buy it, but there is a price they can adjust. And it looks like the Ford, they can play with that same way as a Tesla plane with your money because they keep getting a lot of different loans from the government. That's, that's not my thing. So my thing is, to show you an idea how they're producing the cars for you and for me. They're producing it the cheapest way as they can find. So the covers, the plastic, all the bolts, the way it's, the way it's assembled. Uh, I can feel it, you know, if you compare any other new cars, even the Mazda, the Toyota Mazda, they made it a little bit different way. Uh, it's not feeling so cheap. Ford, Chevy, in my opinion, it looks so cheap everywhere. All the materials, the way they put it, the gaps, they looks good. They're much better than the new Tesla. I'm telling you, the new Tesla, it is a horrible. It is a horrible. I mean, why three? The cheaper Tesla, the, the, the much, like the way horrible the car looks like when you come in closer to that. When you come in closer to the Ford, you're gonna get that sparks, you know, like the grill, the huge grill. It is a chrome, huge emblem. You're like, wow, that's the Ford. That's a brand new, it smells new. But when you open the hood, when you start checking uh, the way this one connected, the way they put this one and that one, you might gonna get an idea about the cheapest assembly uh, line as you can get, as they can get, not you. So what's going on under the hood? Under the hood, we do have a lot of space. We can put different kind of engine, even the four cylinder. I think some of F-150 right now, you can buy it with 2.3 EcoBoost. This one, like I say, V6, and there is enough space to put V8. So the PCM, it's always been on top, it's still on the top. So they basically are asking you to go through the water or through some other stuff. So the PCM not gonna get corroded. But over the years, if your car is somewhere in the middle state or maybe it's seeing the snow and the rain, even the PCM and that location like that on the top, still gonna get corroded and gonna get bad and you have to replace it. So that's the air for the engine going on top again, like PC on the top, uh, PCM on the top, you do have the air duct on the top. So I'm assuming you can go under water like that, maybe a little bit less, but the Ford telling you, you can go up to here because I'm not gonna suck all the water from there. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. Is it a cool durable engine? I have no idea, honestly, 2.7 V6. I did see a lot of the, the what is it? The Edge, Ford Edge Sport uh, from 2015. And they've been, they've been going, I mean, they're not that expensive at the junkyard, about, uh, about 4,000 for this engine. So it's not that much. But if you're gonna do some head job or whatever, it's gonna be much expensive. Uh, you don't need to do it. So the main idea of the truck you're gonna buy, that's the bad. I mean, see, it's 2020, all the Toyotas by 2020, they, they start doing like soft opening, but this one is not soft opening at all. Looks like somebody, somebody got the uh, fire. Somebody may be doing uh, barbecue or whatever. That's what the truck designed for. That's what the people using it for. Not only for the, the uh, daily needs or not only for the construction. They're using it for something funny like it is a charcoal. Yeah. So they, they've been doing barbecue right inside. 
right inside the bed. Uh, but besides that, what I would do, I would put the mattress here, go somewhere uh, outside on the nature, maybe come ground or just to the beach, you know, and spend the night inside the bed. You just get a lot of fresh air, see the stars and uh, get recharged. That's what the car designed for and that's what the car uh, going to give it to you if you want to use it the way you want it. So one of, one of the most uh, common problems right now in Los Angeles, besides uh, stealing catalytic converters on this car, what they can get, they can get your trunk lead. And on some resources, like some websites, whatever, you might gonna see the used one, different colors, without any scratches, without any dents. They sell an used one so you can get your own trunk lead from someone for the money. Basically, if you're not locking it or your lock is not working, they just come in on the back of the truck, they open in it, and there is a slide. See, like that, that's it, you pull it out. It's super easy, you don't need any tools, because here you have a click, you just, <clears throat> it's better use a screwdriver, but what you can do, you can do like this, and you can do like that, and that's it. And it's in my hand, and I'm running away. But this thing itself, Use one, it's gonna cost money. It's gonna cost about between, I would say, 500 and 1,000 bucks. So the people who know, they're gonna steal it easily. That's why make sure any truck you have, because it's not common problem for F-150, for all the trucks, Toyota, Chevy, Ram, doesn't matter. They keep stealing it. So people trying to find a way to make money. That's just crazy, I mean, but the, it is a reality of 2023, post-pandemic, post-pandemic, and that's how some people making money on you just make sure you got your your truck protected so what's going on when you drive an f-150 that's the that's the car designed for construction i think so in my opinion because especially uh xlt if you drive in raptor that's kind of different you're gonna get uh you're gonna get an emotion this car 2.7 v6 twin turbo engine i mean there is not so many emotions uh during your drive but still i do like the trucks it's kind of it's kind of soft car especially this one lifted i don't know why they lift it up but they left the same wheels original one uh, they put mt tires on it uh, uh, i don't understand so anyway that's the nice cool car there is a lot of space inside there is a lot of space for your workers if you're gonna lift the seat the middle one and somebody put on it it has a seat belt it's always been doing like that all the f-150 whatever used to be on the market whatever they produced i drove them all even 90s those are super nice especially right now they are popular somewhere in mexico for some other thing so 2020 f-150 what's the quality the steering wheel warning out already falling apart that's the common problem for the ford focuses mondeo i mean the escapes and uh, fusions they all doing the same i don't understand why they keep doing the same kind of materials quality if your steering wheel keep falling apart nobody concerned about it i don't understand why 92,000 miles the car itself feeling really good suspension engine transmission not that bad so probably they didn't pull a lot of stuff on the back but they put the cover on the top of the bed so it means they were not used for uh, heavy stuff so while we're standing in the line to get some starbucks drink because it's too hot outside i want to tell you about something daily daily usage so number one there is a uh, what about the charging i mean there is a lot of charging ports it's uh, two of them and there is a usb charge so you can put your phone plug it in and charge it or play music whatever you want so the start and stop function is just useless especially when it's so hot outside you see not gonna work it just like i don't understand honestly i do not understand that function and if somebody can explain it to me how much money how much gas they can save by using that please tell me so because um, i never tried myself but i almost always turn it off because it's just annoying so there is a trail backup so basically what you can do if you're going to put the uh, trailer behind your car you can adjust your brakes the way you're going to brake it if you don't know how to use it google it but it's it's not complicated to explain it but anyway so just when you have a trailer you can adjust your brakes so it's going to do the different percentage of the brakes on your truck by saving your uh, and saving your life 
during some <clears throat> unexpected condition on the road when you drive in Australia. So the purpose of using the truck is just limitless. There is a lot of things you can do for, uh, you can do with. Number one, you can go off-roading a little bit, maybe light, because uh, for it's not the car I would do off-road. But if you want to go and visit some places you've never been before, that's what you can do on this truck. If you want to use it for family needs, for sure you can, especially you do, if you do have a cover for your bed, so you can put a lot of stuff. If you're going on the beach, you can cover it so nobody can take it without your permission. Plus, you have a lock on the tailgate. That's super cool. There is a lot of space in the car. There is a back, uh, back seat you can lift it up, and there is a huge compartment for a lot of different stuff. There is a huge bench on the back, so you can put a lot of uh, car seats. So basically three of them, that's what I need. Uh, a lot of space on the front. If you want to get your mother-in-law or your father-in-law and put them in the middle, because your wife going to sit there and your three kids going to be on the back, this car can help you with that. So what about the gas, uh, gas economy? I have no idea. V6 2.7 for sure, uh, spending uh burning less gas than 3.5 3.5 it's a nice engine has a lot of problem not a lot has a common problem with phasers but the ford did extension warranty for that so there is a what are you gonna get when you get in the ford not only f-150 but especially f-150 you're gonna get uh constantly uh notifications about open recalls like this car for example has a lot of open recalls and i have to take it but probably i'm not gonna take it because i don't want to but the Ford doing a lot of recalls for the locks, door locks. It is a common issue since 2010, I would say. All the Ford Focuses, they used to have the same problem. And it looks like they're using the same company who producing the locks. And they keep doing it, keep upgrading and keep sending uh, notice about uh, open recall. So one of the interesting points about F-150, it has a lot of different engines. There is a lot of... Uh, not a lot, but there is a turbo engines, 2.3, 2.7 V6 like this car has, 3.5. Besides that, there is a, a natural inspiration without the turbo. There is a 3.3 engine, there is a 4.7, I think, 5.0, uh, 5.4. Before it was 6.2. There is like a lot of them, but most of the time, the engine, the short block itself, it is the same. You don't want to know about it. When you buy the car like that and you, you're willing to pay about 33, 35,000 for the truck, okay, I would say between 30 and 35. That's what this car worth because it's 2020. It has uh, only 90, not only, it has 92,000 miles on it and it's kind of high, but same time it's not and the car worth money still a lot because it's a four by four. It is a well desired, high desired truck F-150. So the whole idea of the new cars right now, it's not the same nowadays anymore as it used to be. So nobody talking about the quality, nobody talking about the gaps. And I think that they've been uh, destructing a long time ago. It's not just happened. It was keep going. And uh, Tesla showed it to me and the Ford like that is showing it to me also because the people don't care and the car production, I mean car producers, they don't care anymore about the people. We're not going to talk anymore about the quality, how the thing, the doors are, what about the crash test when they did it Volvo and F-150 to the roof. So basically the metal sheds on the top of the roof. It's just so thin. If something's going to happen, you're not going to survive for sure. If you're not believing me, check it out, the crash test. So nobody talking about that anymore. Everybody talking about the thing, about some, some material stuff like the car and how you can use it, what you can do it and uh, what's, what's the joyable part from that. There is a lot of joyable parts. You can get it from the truck F-150. I'm not going to talk anymore about the quality because the quality, it depends of the driver. It depends of the uh, purpose of the car. I mean, if you want a luxury, super nice car, you have to look for something else. If you need a daily driving car, what you can use for different needs, that's the car definitely for you because the Ford, like I say, in my opinion, and it's not only in my opinion, that's the US market opinion showing, that's number one truck sell in the United States it means something for me and for you so thank you so much for watching it and uh, see you next time put some comments below what do you think about the trucks and what do you think about F-150 itself and uh, see you next time
Make a little, 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 make a little